Hi guys, Colsey, and today I'm back with some more YouTube tips and tricks and things. This episode, I'm going to talk about more the software side of things, as in like editing software, recording software, photo editing software, things like that. Last episode, I talked more about uh, when you're starting out and basics of YouTube. And this episode, I kind of want to go a bit deeper into like software. These topics are more helpful for everyone, whereas last time it was more helpful for like smaller channels or people starting out or thinking about starting YouTube. This time, it should be something that can help everyone. Again, I don't claim to know everything. These are just my personal opinions and things that I've picked up or things that I've figured out or learn along the way. Hopefully this advice can be useful to you guys. Okay, we'll start with recording software. So you have a few options with recording software. There's a few different programs that you can use. Sometimes it depends on what you have. For example, you can use Shadow Play if you have a Nvidia graphics card. I don't know if AMD have one of their own. I've never had an AMD card, so I don't know. So I'll just go with what I actually know. Uh, Shadow Play doesn't take up a lot of your computer power while you're gaming, so it's not gonna re it's not gonna affect your gameplay, as in the quality of the game you're playing whilst you're playing it too much. Also, the quality with Shadow Play is very very good. It's pretty decent. You can get a good quality recording. I use Shadow Play for a while, but then I switched to something better, which I'll talk about in a minute. And I switched from something uh, not worse, but different. I wouldn't say it was worse. It just worked differently. So Shadow Play is a good option. It's good for recording. It also offers backwards recording. So say you're just playing a game and you're not recording and something really cool happens. After it's already happened, you can press the record button or a certain key, I think it's like Alt F10, and it will record, say, the last five minutes. So if you're playing and something cool happens and you're like, God damn it, I wish I was recording, you can just press that key and it will still record previous five minutes, which is really, really good. That's the best thing I've found about Shadow Play, if I'm honest. We'll move on to the second one now. The second one I want to talk about is what I used before I started using Shadowplay, which was Fraps. Now, Fraps is a paid service, so you have to actually buy Fraps. Now, with Fraps, again, very, very good quality recording. Probably, maybe almost better than Shadowplay. I haven't really compared them, but I remember it was very, very good quality recording with Fraps. However, these are the negatives with Fraps. Um, it does seem to take up a lot of your computing power. So you may be on slightly lower frames than if you weren't running Fraps. Also with Fraps, very, very large files. Now I, never, I didn't mention this about Shadowplay, but Shadowplay is pretty, pretty okay on file size. They're a decent size, they're fine. Fraps, however, very, very large files. So if you've got space for very large files, I think Fraps is slightly better quality. Just personally, not a fan of Fraps anymore. I started using Fraps, that's what I always used to use. Then I found Shadowplay and I moved to Shadowplay. And then, we'll move on to the third recording software that I have, um, which is what I use now, is OBS. Specifically OBS Studio. Now there's a few reasons I use OBS Studio. Um, it offers a lot of things. It has a lot of settings, which can be very complicated. That's one of the problems and one of the positives, I'd say. You have a lot of control over what you do, the quality of your recording, uh, audio and things like that. You have a lot of control over that. However, obviously, it having a lot of settings and being slightly complicated means that you could mess things up or things could be wrong and stuff like that. So that's, it's up to you. If you can figure it out and get to know how to use it, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that'll tell you the best settings to use and things like that. So it's not too difficult to set up. But it is a lot more complicated than Shadowplay, which is like click one key, and Fraps, which is, again is click one key. OBS, not so simple. There's a lot of settings and bit rates and audio bit rates, and oh, it's complicated as shit. But if you get the hang of it, it's really, really good to use. OBS Studio as well will do streaming, which is very handy. Uh, if you want to stream and record, you know, separately at different times, then you can do you can stream through OBS and you can record through OBS, which is nice because it means you're just using one piece of software that you're going to get very used to. Specifically with OBS Studio, one of my favorite features is the fact you can record like your my voiceover audio, like my commentary and the game audio on separate audio streams. So I can record my audio and game audio on separate audio streams, meaning I can balance them out later when I edit it. Fraps and Shadowplay don't allow this. OBS, OBS Original doesn't allow this. OBS Studio is a new thing for that. You can set separate audio levels, so you can record things on separate audio streams, which is really handy for balancing later in editing. Because you don't want the game too loud and your voice too quiet, 
things like that. If Sometimes there is a really loud game and you're trying to talk over it and if you don't balance your audio, you're not going to be heard. There's no way. They're just going to hear game noise. Personally, I would use OBS. I still do use OBS. Uh, OBS generally works pretty good. It doesn't really it doesn't crash. Uh, it doesn't seem to use a hell of a lot of PC power. So, and it's free. I didn't even mention that. OBS Studio is free as well, so you can get it free. Uh, if you really wanted, you could use OBS to like capture your game, and you could also put your like webcam if you're going to use a webcam in the top corner, and record that. So ev like everything's all put together. Personally, I don't do that. I add the camera in afterwards and things like that because I use green screen a lot. So it makes more sense for me to record camera separately and then the game separately and just edit them together. But if you wanted to, you could do everything. You could balance your audio in OBS. You could put your camera in OBS. So then all you have to do is just chop things down. It would all be recorded together. But I don't do that. I just record volume as loud as it will go. And I record videos separately so that I can edit them afterwards. That's just how I prefer to do things. However, if you want to do things your way, do things your way. Because, I mean, nobody told me how to do these things or... Nobody told me these softwares were good or these are the ones to use. It was just a lot of trial and error for me. So making this video hopefully means that I can help you guys with it. <clears throat> God, I've been talking for like 10 minutes on just that. Jesus Christ. Then you've wasted money. It's a good way to start. Just start with whatever you have. Make whatever you can. Second point. Point number two. Just make the content that you want to make.